Okay, we are recording. So, hi everyone. If you watch this recording, uh, you have a, um, a special um, Google Summer of Code uh, session about uh, external fingerprint storage. It's a project idea um, created uh, by the uh, Jenkins contributors uh, in 2019, but we moved it uh, to this year. And the main objective of uh, this uh, project is to contribute to the pluggable storage ecosystem um, in uh, Jenkins. Originally, it was a part of Cloud Native Special Interest Group, so a group uh, which targets on making uh, Jenkins Cloud Native or at least uh, Cloud friendly. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, and um, one of the projects was pluggable storage, and uh, there is a wider scope which includes um, a number of areas. And fingerprints is just one of these areas, but fingerprints has a lot of uh, use cases uh, for pluggable storage. It's not just externalizing storage, it's probably additional analytics because if you put it to external database like Elasticsearch or whatever, you can query the data, you can visualize it outside Jenkins. Same may apply to Postgres uh, or to whatever solution. Um, and we're interested to have uh, this uh, project in JSOC because it's, uh, the code base is uh, relatively isolated being compared to other pluggable storage uh, uh, stories. And uh, it can be delivered separately within the JSOC timeframe. So that's why we have this project idea. Um, so last year, we didn't uh, uh, start the project for it. Uh, we had several applications, uh, but uh, we didn't accept them during the final project mapping. Um, but uh, I hope that we will be able to run it uh, this year. Uh, so uh, there is a description. Uh, it comes from Google Docs, so probably I'll open it. Uh, so yeah, the project is uh, quite straightforward. There is a fingerprint storage implementation in Jenkins right now. Uh, historically, Jenkins uh, does everything through XML storage on the disk within Jenkins home. And uh, fingerprint storage is not an exception. So right now, everything is being stored in XMLs. Uh, uh, before 2018 or 19, we had 79, I guess we had a performance issues related to that because each fingerprint was stored as a separate file. Now the storage got optimized, but still um, it's a problem uh, for maintainers, it's a problem for backup management. And um, also uh, there is a lot of issues uh, related uh, to data access. So by moving the um, fingerprint storage to database, we could improve the setup. We could also uh, reduce uh, the size of Jenkins homes, uh, which is, is important for containers. Uh, or even if you use a storage coming from volume, you would rather prefer a dedicated database for that. Um, and yeah, that's uh, the main idea. Also, we keep uh, one item um, accessing this data. So if somebody is interested to create new REST APIs or GraphQL uh, support uh, for accessing fingerprint data, for example, if you need to trace artifacts, um, it's something that you could do. And if you're interested in web UI, if you're interested uh, in a particular uh, um, um, security related uh, features like uh, encryption, et cetera, it also could be on the table because uh, there is a lot of potential improvements we could do. So this project is wide open and uh, you can uh, submit uh, your own ideas based on uh, the top level description or your own interest. And my objective for today is to discuss um, uh, the project, uh, answer your questions and provide uh, uh, as much information as possible. And if you want, we can do uh, code dives and whatever, and we can schedule more sessions if needed. So, uh, that's my goal for today, uh, and I hope it provides some top-level overview. If you want, I can show you some examples of how uh, fingerprint uh, in Jenkins look like. Uh, so, one of the good examples is actually Docker traceability plugin. It's not a good an example in terms of uh, the status because the plugin is rather abundant now. I created it in 2015. But uh, due to reasons beyond my control, I had to move to other more important projects. 
uh, but still um, it allows uh, tracking usage of containers uh, within Jenkins. So you can see that um, that is that it's terrible. Yeah. So that um, there is a container info, and uh, basically uh, the plugin allowed to man uh, to trace image usages and container usages within uh, Jenkins interface. Um, the more uh, the more popular use case for that um, is uh, uh, actually artifact uh, storage because when you publish artifacts, you can enable fingerprints, and it's a Jenkins core functionality. So many plugins in Jenkins, like copy artifacts, uh, they actually use fingerprint engine uh, under the hood, and, and you can uh, extend it for more use cases. And this, that's it uh, from me. And uh, let's discuss uh, your project ideas and any questions you have. You are muted, Sumit. Oh, sorry. No, so uh, mm -hmm. the first question I have is, uh, so um, I just wanted to confirm first two things. Uh, in the proposal, uh, there is this, uh, in, sorry, not in the proposal, in the um, idea, in the project mm -hmm. idea. Uh, it is mentioned that uh, um, that uh, the re-implement lazy local storage. Is this correct? That uh, is the interpretation of this correct in the sense that uh, we need to have the file storage as a abstracted away. And yep. uh, is, is this the same thing? Yeah, that's totally correct. So how Jenkins is great? Especially how Jenkins core operate, uh, um, it's so uh, as an extension. Is, from yeah, right. right. So everything is in Jenkins is extensible, and we try to provide right. this extensibility. So when you create uh, a new storage implementation, uh, you can hard code it, or you could create extension points. So for Jenkins, the default way is to create uh, extension points, and you can see that uh, there is quite a number of them. So this list is just for the Jenkins core and plugins can also define their own extension points. So you can have something like, uh, let's say fingerprint storage. For example, here you can uh, take a look at the settings provider, which basically provides uh, some maybe settings, I believe. Um, it's a historical functionality, but it's available uh, in the Jenkins core. Uh, more relevant uh, to the current story, uh, for example, we have a uh, fingerprint storage implementation. Do we have any storage? No, no, no. I, I have proposed yeah. it in the proposal. Uh, we have a, that we have a fingerprint storage, and then we have a file mm -hmm. fingerprint storage for the uh, for ensuring mm -hmm. uh, backwards yep. compatibility. Uh, yeah, right. So, yeah, I was actually uh, looking for um, external storage uh, implementation, not uh, for fingerprint. Sorry uh, for confusion. Yeah, so for yeah, example, uh, workflow API plugin, if I'm not mistaken, I think. Yeah, uh, workflow API provides local storage uh, implementation. We can get to it. Uh, so one uh, example, for example, is uh, credentials uh, provider. So for credentials provider, uh, you can see that uh, this extension point has several implementations, including Kubernetes credentials, plugin, etc. And uh, if you take a look at Java doc, you can see that uh, this is an extension point which basically provides a number of methods. Uh, well, some of methods are defaults, some of methods uh, should be actually extended by implementations. And uh, Jenkins core or plugin separate with these extension points using APIs. So you will provide an abstraction layer um, uh, where you hide uh, the functionality. In the case of uh, fingerprint storage, this uh, abstraction layer is yet to be created because uh, originally it was just a storage implementation. Then uh, there is a additional functionality uh, he added, for example, uh, a fingerprint cleanup and other bits. So if you look at the current uh, fingerprint uh, code uh, in Jenkins, it's a bit scattered and uh, refactoring of it and creating an abstraction layer would be one step. And then uh, yeah, you can uh, use uh, file system fingerprint storage as a first reference implementation. If you're interested, uh, we had uh, several projects, which Sumit already referenced, is about uh, log storage. Um, 
if we go to the previous page, you can see that uh, there was a number of jobs submitted. Uh, so we implemented it uh, for pipeline. It was a first uh, phase. Uh, so JC Blick was working on that external log storage for pipeline. So this one is delivered on the plugins using that. Uh, but we also wanted to expand it into the Jenkins core. So this is uh, the job for that. And this job uh, also has a reference implementation which can show you approximately how it would be done. So here you can see that uh, there are actually uh, multiple components. Uh, the main uh, prototype for me was Elasticsearch Logstash plugin. Um, we also created a special API plugin for login API. So to simplify uh, specific tasks related to external login. For example, um, currently Jenkins core stores XMLs, but uh, let's say we use um, uh, JSON storages. And in such case, you can have common functionality for converting uh, data to JSON and we could put it to the API level. And there was also core functionality, which basically provided uh, these extension points. So here, if you take a look, you can find, yeah, this pull request is big. Uh, and actually this pull request was feature complete. So it wasn't delivered just because uh, there were some uh, design concerns and then we had to move on to another uh, task. Yeah, I pronounce it too often, but yeah, it's open source. Not everything gets integrated. And here you can see that basically the approach uh, is the same. I'll probably uh, go to the file view. Um, so, yeah. Okay. Uh, I changed the interface a bit. It should be here. Okay. Uh, whatever, I'll uh, find the term. And, uh, so, uh, one of the things. Uh -huh. Yeah, so one of the uh, things we added there is uh, log storage. Yeah, log storage is in, uh, if it's in workflow API. So, uh, yeah, but uh, this log storage is different. Uh, because uh, the, so having pipeline was the first step, but uh, pipeline is just a single type, and pipeline does the address use cases, for example, for freestyle jobs uh, like matrix configuration, etc. It doesn't um, address uh, cases for system logging, for agent provisioning, and other bits. So for us, the second phase was to actually provide a more complex solution right inside the Jenkins core and to integrate it with pipeline. So yeah, you can take a look at log storage implementation in uh, pipeline, but I was just showing you this code because it shows what changes in Jenkins code if you want to do that. Uh, for example, um, there was API for builds. So there is, um, okay. So there is run. So it's a common entity which implement, uh, represents any Jenkins build. And here you can see that uh, there are some APIs which we need to adjust. So there are some uh, um, common cases like just uh, the covering storages, etc. And also we needed to customize log storage because our design decision there was to support multiple log storages on a uh, build basis. So for example, uh, you could keep historical builds uh, in a file system, or you could keep new builds in the new system or in arbitrary system, if you wish. Uh, so it, would, uh, it was our approach to the data integration concern. Because if you just decide in your project proposal to have single storage, then you will have to resolve the data integration. Here we uh, approached differently. We decided that, okay, we will just support uh, arbitrary storage. And uh, it won't be our problem to migrate after that. And um, there were also some changes in APIs. So you can see that uh, there are changes here and there because uh, the implementation for us uh, relied on a file system approach internally. So there was methods like get log file um, and right uh, in the run, and uh, it presumes that there is a file in the file system. So there we added some compatibility layers, but uh, for the most of uh, implementations, we introduced new efficient layers. 
we shouldn't create a, we shouldn't require creation of temporary files when it's not needed. So that was what was uh, done for implementation, and uh, all the abstraction there uh, was happening uh, uh, through uh, two components. One was a log storage. So here, log storage uh, is just an um, abstract class which uh, which provides common methods. So, for example, a task listeners, uh, which provides uh, uh, streaming of data in Jenkins, and some declaration logic, which would allow to externalize logging, because uh, for guild logging, we wanted to do submissions right from the agents in Jenkins. But yeah, this is mm -hmm. detail. So this is um, the main abstraction there. And we said that uh, all the details just go to implementations. So Jenkins code doesn't have um, any implementation for them, except uh, file storage. Um, and you can also see that uh, there is another class, which is log storage factory. So in this case, we made a design decision to uh, make a log storage factory an extension point. So there is a producer class, uh, which can be configured in a build, uh, which produces you log storage. Uh, but we created uh, the producer and extension point just because it was uh, more easier from API perspective. For fingerprint storage, um, the, the design um, is up to use and uh, it can be iterated uh, uh, during the first phases. So you don't have to create a final design right now, but uh, keep in mind that uh, uh, factory abstractions and other common abstractions from uh, um, object oriented uh, programming could be also applied here. Uh, so, yeah, this is uh, log storage, and basically, fingerprint storage could be quite similar in terms of implementation if you do it in Jenkins code. So, you can just take a look at uh, the job I was referencing, uh, and it provides uh, some information about how it was done. And, yeah. So you can also take a look at the API plugins. So these plugins are rather prototypes, uh, just reference implementations which show how it could be used. So do not consider them as a final solution, but if you want, you can uh, review them. So I hope it summarizes how to look, look architecturally. Mm, and by phases, if we return to the proposal, yeah, my expectation that uh, there is a new extension point for sure, so that uh, everything else can be implemented externally. We don't look forward to uh, adding more dependencies uh, into the Jenkins core. We try to avoid it uh, as much as possible. So we hope that uh, all the new implementations could be done as plugins. Um, uh, the creating these plugins um, is um, the most, uh, yeah, it will be uh, basically happening in parallel. So you can design APIs uh, and extension uh, points in parallel. We introduce some tooling for that. For example, the APIs in Jenkins could be marked as beta, so you don't commit to binary compatibility, uh, even if uh, you went uh, code earlier. Um, so you will be able to deliver uh, uh, these plugins in parallel with these core changes. Mm -hmm. So plugin development and uh, core uh, changes in the core can run in parallel? Yes. Yeah, they can run in parallel. And uh, just to remember how we approach our JSOC projects, we want uh, components to be uh, continuously integrated into uh, master branch. So we don't want to have a JSOC project, which basically has a long standing pull request for three months, four months, and then something happens. Uh, if it's possible to break down the project and to deliver things incrementally to the main code base, we recommend this approach. Uh, it shows to be much more efficient. Uh, and uh, uh, well, that's how we develop uh, Jenkins. So, it uh, also changes some uh, approach. Uh, it requires some approaches in testing, for example, because uh, we also expect each change to be more or less complete. So it means that you propose a feature, you expect it to propose documentation and tests when this feature ends. 
Uh, but yeah, from what we've seen, uh, and yeah, this is a common software practice now, that if you break down your store, uh, projects to smaller changes, you can actually deliver them uh, quicker. Yeah. And yeah, um, that's what we will practice here. And answer my question actually that I was going, uh, my follow up question was uh, that actually I, in my current proposal, I've broken down core and plugin development into two parts. And then I was thinking, Mm -hmm. uh, that becomes a very short time frame for both an alpha and beta release according I, that's what I thought so yeah that actually mm -hmm. that sorts that out also. yeah right so it's uh, difficult uh, to design a good API from the first approach uh, that's why when we started uh, doing major architecture changes around 2014-15 we added some tooling then this tooling was extended so now it's possible uh, to just uh, create beta APIs to integrate them without committing to binary compatibility, which is a big bother when it uh, becomes productized. Um, but, and you can also incrementally deliver changes. So for example, if you propose a pull request to the Jenkins code, so let's say you deliver uh, a feature. So here, uh, okay, it doesn't really matter. Let's just open uh, the first open pull request. Uh, yeah, it has nothing to do with plugin APIs, but still. Uh, so we, here you can see that uh, we actually have. Uh, let me see publish incrementals here. I hope so. Yeah, there isn't just some deviation. So uh, for almost every pull request built, uh, we publish uh, incrementals uh, version. Uh, so it means that uh, there is a new release published or maybe in a repository for each pull request. And if you're developing a plugin, you can uh, still get uh, this version. Um, okay. I'm not sure what happened in this version. So you can see that uh, uh, there are URLs, but so basically it should be published uh, with the ID, uh, but uh, the notification didn't come through. So maybe something went wrong to this, uh, this deployment, but in principle for every pull request and for every built in a branch, you should be getting uh, um, a version which you consumed, uh, can consume in your plugin. So you can uh, really do development in parallel uh, with using the Jenkins CI infrastructure and other bits, and you can uh, do development quickly. So for me, yes, all the development uh, would happen in a parallel. Uh, and uh, it's actually uh, more convenient because you deliver a feature and you don't worry uh, what is uh, the component. Um, well, uh, also in the uh, mm -hmm. uh, project idea, it was mentioned storage of data structures currently supported. Am I uh, like, is this uh, a reference to like everything that fingerprint supports, like fingerprint map, fingerprinter, fingerprint, all those classes? Uh, is mm. this talking about that? So, uh, mm, not exactly. Uh, we have, uh, so Jenkins uh, fingerprint structure is basically uh, not formalized. Uh, so, let's take a look at the structure uh, fingerprint. Uh, okay, so uh, here we, you can see uh, the structure of the fingerprint, uh, but uh, one main thing here that fingerprint uh, consists of faces. Okay. Um, uh, so it contains a list of faces. Um, and uh, uh, each facet is basically an object structure which is uh, uh, provided by plugins or by Jenkins core and it doesn't have fixed structure, it doesn't have schema. So for example, if you just wanted to create a, a table uh, in a SQL database, uh, it might be a challenge for you because yeah, this structure is not normalized in any way. It's just an object and we use uh, a library extreme to serialize this object uh, to the disk. So one of the potential challenges in this project is how to serialize it to databases. Uh, if you use database, especially if you still want to access this data for whatever analytics. 
yeah, it's a nice challenge and uh, you can come up with a solution. But yeah, what I mean here that uh, you cannot uh, really rely on uh, regular data structure, which is sometimes common uh, for databases. Yes, actually that's what uh, I've been thinking uh, that's a challenge in my proposal because I mean, either, like if I'm storing an XML file in a storage, uh, that gets, I mean, if I store it directly as XML, not only do I have a memory overhead, but uh, also then I have the problem of maintaining consistency because if some other Jenkins instance reads it after I have read it, uh, and uh, tries to access it. Either I can put a lock on the entire database, have it as a transaction, but then I have other problems. Like I don't know when it's actually just trying to read it or it's actually going to edit it also later on. Yeah, uh, having multiple Jenkins instances accessing the same database, um, it's a use case. Uh, for your JSOC application, uh, you basically have a choice whether you want to, to support it or not because uh, there is uh, definitely benefits for that, especially uh, when we talk about uh, large scale Jenkins instances, which includes hundreds, hundreds of masters, putting all the data into the same database would really make sense. Uh, but uh, yeah, data handling will be a challenge for you. Though um, uh, current uh, databases allow resolving that, uh, there is already a lot of functionality. As long as you do not try to trace the same artifact, then yes, you will have to uh, have proper um, APIs and you put uh, at some logic on the database side, but uh, still you would uh, need to figure out a way how to handle it in uh, Jenkins API. Because right. yeah, you need to implement fingerprint storage API to make sure that it's not a problem of the Jenkins core, it's a problem of the plugin. Uh, which talks um, to a database or whatever and use it as a specific functionality. Mm -hmm. Right. Like I can't, I, like it's, it's a challenge even for how to, how the reference implementation is going to even do it. I mean, so uh, yeah, like I, I'm still working on it. Uh, yeah. So good news is that uh, you don't have to provide um, a production ready implementation with all features at the first step. Uh, again, um, we could start from prototype uh, or from uh, alpha version for the plugin, which uh, provides some features. And our advice is to have alpha releases early to get some community feedback. And then you can uh, build on the top of it. And uh, for me, even if uh, the result of your project is the uh, API in Jenkins core and uh, reference implementation, uh, which works, but which has some uh, document limitations. For me, it's uh, a good result. So um, having a full production ready implementation uh, uh, would be nice, of course, but uh, it's not a, a strict goal for the project. Okay. Because there are also security concerns and other things. So when you try to create something production grade, you realize that you need a team for several years. And this is where the projects die. So for JSOC, uh, you don't uh, want that. Uh, we deliver something and then we expand. Okay, so uh, speaking of facets and other bits, uh, so if you're concerned about storing XMLs to disk, uh, there is actually an, another approach. Uh, for example, you could just use blobs uh, because uh, Jenkins includes uh, its own uh, data serialization engine. You have a remote end protocol, basically a master to agent communication, and it uh, uses object serialization. And for that, uh, there is an engine in Jenkins. So if uh, you want to have binary storage, it could be more efficient and uh, yeah, you can just uh, reuse uh, uh, components while well, I will show remoting, uh, but yeah, remoting is the implementation and the uh, data serialization logic is mostly in the Jenkins core. So you can use the CPIs and if you want, I can show them to you later. Yeah, so, so like the other option was obviously that uh, I go for a relational approach and uh, break it down and uh, have it into tables. But even 
that is not a, a straight forward solution because uh, mm-hmm. even that involves that i have to know when changes what changes have happened because i can't make an update operation without knowing that so i mean mm-hmm. what i was trying was i didn't want to touch the fingerprint class as much mm-hmm. uh, but i think this is going to ultimately uh, i mean i can't think of a way that i achieve this without touching that so yeah Yeah, it's technically possible. So fingerprint is just an abstraction layer right now with Jenkins. Uh, well, to be honest, uh, this abstraction is leaky because uh, it uh, references uh, file system and uh, vice versa. But still, uh, there is abstraction layer we, which we could use. And if you want to build a relational structure for some components, it's possible because for artifacts, for uh, other deployment facets that are classes right inside Jenkins core, So you could try to build relational structure for that. Uh, if it helps, and if you build that, uh, it may, might be diffi- uh, definitely helpful for getting information about these artifacts, for tracing, for querying the data from the storage or from the Jenkins side. So if you do that, uh, it would be definitely a nice addition. At the same time, uh, it might be challenging when you go into details. For example, if you talk about um, uh, Docker traceability I presented, So here, for example, Docker fingerprint facet, uh, which basically well, is just uh, an abstraction layer, but um, the storage implementations actually include a, a lot of data in Docker traceability plugin, because we just uh, invoke uh, commands like Docker inspect and uh, translate these commands um, uh, to the uh, data structure. So finally, there is a lot of data being stored and uh, just handling this data, indexing this data in Postgres, it might be challenging. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and speaking of that, if somebody wants to recover Docker traceability plugin as a part of this project, it's also possible. Mm, so, uh, so, Uh, Mit already did a couple of pull requests to the Jenkins core, which actually could stabilize this plugin. Uh, but, uh, so yeah, if you want to work specifically on Docker side, uh, yeah, I believe it would be also possible. Okay. Anything else? Any questions? Uh, yeah, so um, mm-hmm. if I want to propose any QI improvements, uh, how do I go about that? Should I like, because uh, I'm not sure, uh, is there's a UI SIG also, I think. Like, I'm not sure how to propose a UI change. Uh, like, should uh, I just add design templates and leave it mm-hmm. So um, in your proposal, you're welcome to put it uh, how you prefer. For example, the separate section with uh, uh documentation etc so just explaining what you want to do it will be enough if you want to get feedback you can uh, go beyond for example platform special interest group or cloud native uh, seed there are other special interest groups in jenkins like user experience and what you could do if you have a particular section you can just join the gitter chat or send a message to the mailing list and say hey i have a proposal what do you think Uh, also, you can just go to the Jenkins developer mailing list because uh, we are perfectly fine to discuss such topics there. So if you have a proposal, which is, uh, let's say, a part of your project, uh, but it's a part which can be discussed separately, just feel free to start a thread about that. And uh, I believe you will get feedback. Just now, all- yep. Go, go, go ahead. Yeah, personally, I'm not an expert uh, in UI, ex- especially in terms of user experience. I can write some code, uh, but yeah, I also rely on feedback a lot when we develop uh, stuff. And yesterday, we just had a blog post by Uli Hafner about some components. Uh, so I'm not sure well, whether you have already seen that. Uh, but yeah, we try the user interface of the portal plugins, but basically, Uh, same approaches could be applied to fingerprints, etc. 
because uh, this area could be improved a lot in Jenkins. Mm. Yeah, there is a lot of code, but yeah, basically it's uh, about additional controls uh, for analytics, for data browsing. And for fingerprints, it's, it might be also important because, again, uh, the, you would be uh, handling a lot of data. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, would it also make sense to like uh, file a JEP right now or not? Uh, so my proposal would be to postpone a JEP. So if you talk about a formal JEP um, towards uh, the community bonding and coding phase. So right now JEP is a pretty heavy process. Uh, and uh, right now going through that uh, might be time consuming. So for me, recommendation is to do it uh, during uh, the project. At the same time, if you have a proposal, uh, you can just submit it as a Google Doc for initial review. And I can just provide you an example. I, so I'm working on public roadmap for the Jenkins project. So before submitting a job, I just started a mailing, developer mailing thread. And there you can see a link to the Google Doc. So instead of doing formal job, I basically used the Google Doc to put the information. I made it publicly available uh, for comments. I've got some comments uh, there and uh, I'm processing that. So even before submitting the job, uh, I get some feedback from the community and use that. So if you have something in mind, uh, you could do it in this way. For example, just send it. Uh, some parts of your draft or maybe a link to your project draft to the developer mailing list uh, just highlighting particular components and yeah, I believe it would be the best approach for now. Mm -hmm. Okay, sounds good. Yeah. Later, uh, we can convert it to JEP, that's for sure. Uh, for me, this if you have fingerprint storage, having a JEP for that would be nice. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, rather follow up for me. Okay. Okay. So. So, any other questions, especially from other students, because you must stay silent uh, during the call. So, don't hesitate to ask questions, and if I miss something. Uh, just ask, or if you are not comfortable, to you can ask in chat. I still have difficulties uh, with opening it. Just a second. Um, yeah, no questions in uh, the chat right now. So apparently now you cannot open chat when you screen share. I'll try to assemble uh, some meeting notes uh, after the meeting, uh, but in general, uh, feel free to add uh, whatever you have in mind to the Google Doc I shared, because yeah, these meeting notes are mostly for you and they may help uh, you with uh, the next steps. Mm -hmm. yeah. Really interesting project though. Mm -hmm. Well, we have many projects in <laughs> which are interesting and yeah, yeah. You, uh, you can uh, find something uh, in a new project and you can expand. So project ideas yeah. are just project ideas. Yep. Mm -hmm. For example, in your case, sliding, if you're interested, since you work on a Docker polling proposal, maybe yeah. you would be interested uh, to, work, uh, to take a look at uh, Docker fingerprints and Docker traceability because it's in the same area. So, for, yeah. for example, for you, it might be an interesting addition to your project uh, if you just look at that. Yeah, uh, do you have any links of that? Uh, can you post in the chat or something? I could definitely take a look. Uh, yeah, so this is basically a Docker traceability. So just to explain uh, the history of this plugin, yeah, it was started in 2015. 
I just spent two weeks or maybe a bit more on it. So it was working, but it has uh, some downsides uh, right now. Uh, for example, it has no uh, fixed client, so you have to use a REST API to submit the data from external locations. Uh, but okay. basically, it allows to do end-to-end -end, um, image and container to usage tracking within Jenkins. So for example, mm -hmm. you build a, um, a Docker image using Docker pipeline plugin, and then you use it uh, in test environment. So you can use this plugin to trace uh, this usage uh, across uh, these use cases. For example, okay. yeah, with some summaries, with deployment of events, and uh, everything is powered by fingerprint engine. So for example, okay. if somebody created external fingerprint storage, you could still uh, get benefits uh, from that in the, um, uh, Docker polling project. Okay, yeah, I'll definitely take a look, thanks. Yeah, so it's just an uh, interesting use case for fingerprints. Okay. Anything else for today? not thanks a lot for your time and again uh, it's just uh, uh, overview meeting plus Q&A. so if you have any questions you can uh, follow up later in the chats um, right now uh, the project idea uses uh, cloud native seek but uh, oh, did we just this. lose the connection i think so yeah, yeah. so use it for the connection yes he's the host so we'll have to wait so, uh, so yeah, same here. Mm -hmm. Anyways, I went through your proposal. Really interesting. Very nice proposal. Mm -hmm. Yep. And, uh, and, yours uh, are also yeah, there are uh, people interested. We lost, people in, we lost you. Uh, I think for the entire time. Good to have you back, Oleg. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, so I work remotely and my internet quality is not very good, especially on mornings due to reason I cannot explain. Uh, okay, so what I wanted to say that uh, uh, right now the project uses cloud native special interest uh, group channels. Depending on the state, we might keep it as is or we uh, might move it to the platform special interest group, which uh, is much more active. Um, so uh, I will make sure that there is community around this project if it happens, or if there are multiple projects, it's potentially possible. I believe we can find monitors for the survey. Um, yeah, just make sure to submit your proposals early uh, so we can provide feedback and we can uh, do the logistics on our side. Uh, it's fine to just uh, get feedback from the draft state as a Google Doc, right? I mean, the official uh, interface for GSOC isn't very necessary, right? Yeah, so my recommendation is to do both. So for Jenkins community, yes, we operate through Google Doc and through mailing list uh, because um, we want uh, the discussions to be as public as possible. Uh, only mentors would have access to your um, application uh, on the JSOC website. So basically we don't use JSOC website for discussions. Uh, we use other channels. Uh, but still uh, submitting a project job there makes sense because firstly we can see uh, who is going to apply uh, to this project or who considers that. Uh, and we can do some initial planning plus uh, we can get metrics. Because yeah, we have uh, two or three dozen active students across uh, the projects right now. Uh, likely, we will get more applications. Um, so usually, uh, there are many last minute applications, etc. But uh, when we look at the uh, proposal dashboards, we can already start uh, pre planning uh, uh, for the next phases, which is important because. April uh, is a relatively silent for students, but it's not like that for academics and mentors. Yeah. Yeah, I did that. I guess I submitted all of my proposals via the Google dashboard as a draft. So 
I'll probably hit the PDF button at the last minute. Yeah. Yes. So, hoping so to get something. Uh, edit your drafts. Uh, do not submit uh, it as final proposals for now. Just keep it as a draft. It's perfectly fine with us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. That's it. Okay. Anything else for today? Yep. Yeah, I ask it uh, too often. But yeah, yeah. thanks uh, a lot for your time. And uh, Thank you, thanks, Alex. Project. Okay. Bye, all. Bye. See you.